if you're new to the tool world and you're just starting to get into do-it-yourself projects, you might find that when you go to the tool department, you're overwhelmed by the amount of tools that are on display, especially when it comes to drills and drivers. A lot of them look very similar, but they have completely different names, but they also seem to have the same features. So it can be a little overwhelming if you're new to buying tools. If you've ever done a home improvement project or ever used a drill, then you've probably end up handling a drill driver combination. These tools are great for doing any of your wood, plastic, or metal drilling, and then driving screws or bolts. Now what makes these tools great is the fact that they are all purpose, but it doesn't excel in having to do anything more difficult than your standard stuff. These drills typically come with a torque setting selector, a two speed on top selector between a one and a two for slower and fast, the forward and reverse switch, and then your standard trigger. And then sometimes they also come with an additional light, a magnet, and possibly a bit holder. They usually take sizes of anywhere from zero up to a half inch for your bit size. Now the drill's flexibility in being able to take either the standard quarter inch hexagon or your standard round drill bit allows you to take various things besides just drill bits and standard driving bits. You could also put on, say, a paint mixer to be able to mix a gallon of paint real quickly. <clears throat> and the other benefit you have with the variable speed triggers that most drills come with and the torque selector is that you can do maximum speed while doing a limited amount of torque. So while the drill driver combination is a great all-purpose tool, it doesn't have the power that the impact driver has. So this is an impact driver. And although it can do a lot of the same features that the general all-purpose drill and driver does, it's made for one specific thing, driving very large screws and bolts through hard material. So this tool generates a huge amount of torque. Typically, of all the power tools on the market, impact drivers are gonna generate the most amount of torque. So that's rotational force that it does. So this is where some people might get confused about what the difference is between an impact driver and a hammer drill is, because both terms seem to sound like they apply an impact force to the actual drill bit. But that's not the case with an impact driver. The impact driver produces its force in a rotational direction. So the way this works is that while it still rotates the bit, either forward or backwards, clockwise or counterclockwise, it also spins up essentially a spring on the inside. And this spring compresses, and when it releases, it produces an extra jolt of energy to rotate the bit just a little bit more in that direction you're going. So essentially, imagine going at a slow speed, and then all of a sudden tapping on the gas and generating a large amount of power, and then immediately releasing, and going back to that speed you are going at before. This is what the impact driver does to help generate additional force to drive that bolt or screw into the hole. Another analogy to use is simply using a wrench. As you rotate the wrench around, imagine taking a rubber mallet and tapping on that wrench to produce the additional force in rotation. And that's how an impact driver produces even more rotational force than your standard drill driver. And while this tool can be used for drilling, it doesn't excel at that. The main issue on hand is that you cannot select a limited amount of torque. So it does have a variable speed trigger, and as you squeeze the trigger, you essentially get more torque, but you can't limit it. So when you squeeze the trigger all the way down, you will produce the maximum amount of torque possible that this tool can produce. With a drill driver combination, if I set it to say number 12 on the torque selector, even at full speed, it's only going to go up to the 12 torque ability. But if I put it at the 24, then I can generate the maximum amount of torque capable with that tool. So the drill driver combination allows you to help limit your torque so you don't over drill something, unlike the impact driver where you're gonna get that maximum amount of torque possible because it's meant to give maximum amount of force to drive that bolt as quickly as possible. Another thing that might be confusing is if you've ever looked at hammer drill bits, which are very special because they have to be made to withstand concrete, they typically will say that they are made to do hammer drill and impact drivers. So you can put a hammer drill bit into an impact driver. This here is a hammer drill bit, and you can tell based off the spade chisel type shape at the top of it that it's made for going into concrete. And for the impact driver, you simply slide it in place. Now, you might be wondering, if it doesn't work the same way as the hammer drill, why would I want to use this bit in this tool? Well, again, you're able to produce a large amount of torque with this tool. In 
these bits are made to take a large amount of force. So if you find that you don't necessarily need to be tapping at the concrete in the process of trying to drill it, you could just use an impact driver where it can generate that huge amount of torque and still drill a hole for you but you don't have the added benefit the hammer drill comes into play, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So another tool I'm gonna to bring up as an honorable mention, because I don't have this tool, is an impact wrench. Now, if you're in a tool department, you'll see probably the impact driver right next to the impact wrench, and you might be wondering what the difference is. And really, the only difference between these two tools is the type of attachment they take. Your impact driver has the ability to pop in a drill bit or just a standard driver bit, and your impact wrench will typically come with either a quarter inch or a half inch socket head on the top of it with no ability to take anything else. Now, if you don't want to buy both tools, you can get by with an impact driver and using one of these attachments, you simply put it at the end and now you have your socket head attachment. You can get by essentially just with this tool, but at the same time, you have to realize that because you have to put an attachment on, the tool gets a little bit longer, and you have the possibility that you might have the tool bit slip a little bit compared to your actual dedicated driver. All right, last of all, we're gonna talk about the hammer drill. So in the past, this tool wasn't really comparable to the other two. Hammer drills before technology improved were rather big, bulky, and they really couldn't be run by batteries. They had to be plugged in because of the amount of power they generated. Nowadays, with improvements to the motors and lithium ion batteries, we've been able to make the, bat the tools much smaller. And so now hammer drills look very similar to your standard drill and drivers on the market. Now, first off, it's important to note that not every hammer drill is a drill driver combination. Some of them are still only dedicated towards hammer drilling and there's no way to turn off that feature. This Ryobi happens to be a drill driver combination. You still have the ability to select different torque settings, just like your standard drill and driver. You have two different speed settings. You have your forward and reverse setting, and you have the adjustable chuck that can take up to a half inch. The only thing this one really doesn't have is it doesn't have the magnet on the base to be able to take any drill bits or store screws and stuff. So while visibly from the exterior, this tool looks very similar to a standard drill and driver, on the inside, it's quite a bit different. So the way the hammer drill works is that in order to help drill in the concrete, while it still does the same rotation as your drill driver, it also adds a light tapping effect to the end of the drill bit. The way it does this is it uses essentially two metal gears inside which produce a tapping effect on the base of the drill bit, causing a very fast tapping movement on the tip. What this does is that it helps chisel away at that concrete or masonry work that you're working on. This helps break it apart so that the drill bit can continue to go deeper into the hole. Now it does this extremely quickly. We're talking thousands of beats per minute. So hammer drills are usually looked at for their effectiveness as to how many beats per minute they're capable of generating. And again, this is different from impact driver or impact wrench because it's producing that in a straight line effect on the drill bit, not as a rotational force like the driver and wrenches do. Now, another added benefit to some of the newer hammer drills on the market, such as this Biobi, is the fact that you can turn off the hammer setting. So to turn on the hammer setting on this drill, you would turn it all the way to the right and you select the hammer option. And if you want to do standard drilling, you simply move away from the hammer selector. And then of course you can do your standard drilling and driving by selecting your different torque settings on here. So you might be wondering, why would I not want to buy a hammer drill instead of buying the normal drill driver combo? Well, hammer drills are still very expensive. Your standard drill and driver combination are usually less than $50 on the market today. A hammer drill typically goes for over $100. So they are quite a bit more expensive than a normal drill. You also have to take into account that if you are gonna use this tool for normal drilling or driving, it is quite a bit more powerful still than your standard drill, even though it looks like it's the same size. It doesn't just have the additional hammer effect, it still is a much more powerful motor because of what it has to accomplish. So it's easy to over drill or over drive a screw or bolt because it's so much more powerful. So while the torque setting on one might seem like it's comparable to this one, it's not. So you might end up overdriving with this tool compared to underdriving on your standard one. I hope this video explained the differences and the purpose for each of these tools. Leave us a comment down below if you have a tool comparison video you would like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Grunt Cave.